This is the day that the Lord has made. We all have reason to rejoice and to be glad in it. Come on, if you're glad with me just to be in the house of the Lord once more time. Come on, somebody. Will you give God a great big round of applause? We are grateful to be here on this, another Sunday morning. We welcome you to another First Baptist Church South Hill worship experience. Let's look to heaven as we, as we prepare our hearts for worship, eternal and gracious God, our Father. God, we come thanking you for this, another day that you've allowed us to come sure. into your presence once more and again. And even now, God, as we come, we ask, Lord, that you would allow us to lay aside every weight and every measure, that we may be free to exalt your name and to give you glory, honor, and praise, because truly, God, you're worthy of all the praise. Bless our hearts, join our hearts uh, as we enter into that holy presence for it is in Jesus name we do pray amen and amen come on give God a great big round of applause uh, will you receive the male chorus as they come to bless us on this morning come on male chorus good morning church Well, I've learned, I've learned to lean and depend, depend on, on Jesus. I've learned, I've learned to lean and trust, trust in the Lord. You see, I found out Boy, if I trust him, he will, he will Cause I've learned, I've learned to, to lean, lean on Jesus. Is that my Can I say it again? I've learned. And depend, on, and depend on Jesus. All I need is a one witness. Somebody here that's trusted. Trust in the Lord. You see, I found out. Oh, if I trust him, he will. He will provide. Cause I've learned, I learned to lean on Jesus. His everlasting. I got to one more thing. Saying, oh, what a fellowship. Oh, what a oh, I'm leaning on Jesus everlasting. Said, oh, what a I've learned to lean on Jesus. Yes, yes, I've learned to lean and depend on I wish I had more time. 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 I wish Singing, oh, how sweet to walk in his river. I'm leaning on Jesus everlasting. Oh, 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 I've learned to lean on Jesus everlasting. Yes, yes, I've learned to lean and depend on Jesus. Can I get somebody? Somebody here that's trusting in the Lord. You see, I found out. I found out, oh, if I trust him, I found out, oh, if I trust him, I found out, oh, if I trust him, all the time, oh, if I trust him, when I was down, oh, if I trust him, and I couldn't get up, oh, if I trust him, all I had to do, y'all, oh, if I trust him, was trust in Jesus, oh, if I trust him, that's all I had to do, y'all, oh, if I trust him, was trust in Jesus, oh, can I tell you another thing? Oh, and I'm talking about me. Oh, you see, I remember oh, a few years ago. Oh, my body got fever. Oh, and then I got sick. Oh, and then I went a-running. Oh, a-running all over town. Oh, and every doctor I went to. All the doctors have let me down But when I came back to church And then I got down on my knees And then I called on Jesus And then I called on Jesus And then Jesus stopped by And laid his hands on me And then he healed my body And he whispered in my ear He said, listen to my child but now while you were running oh, well, from here and there oh, that all you had to do was just go to hell oh, on your knees in prayer oh, don't you know if I healed you 
yesterday, today I'm still the same. When troubles come in your life, call his name. Cause I found out he will. He will. He will. He will provide. Cause I've learned. I want to tell you, I'm still talking. Oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, yes. I've learned to lean on Jesus and to lean on his everlasting arm. Let's give our men another great big round of applause. We praise God for them. Thank you, thank you, men. We give honor to God, the Spirit of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And as we always say, it's just good for us to be here. At this time, I'd like to welcome all guests and visitors that are with us this morning and say to each and every one of you, uh, whether you're in the sanctuary or you're visiting with us first, for the first time online, how delighted and joyful we are uh, that you've taken time out of your schedule to make worship here with us at First Baptist South Hill a part of your today's worship experience. We hope something is said or done today that will enable you to say that I was glad uh, that I tuned in, that I stopped by First Baptist Church South Hill. Let's give our guests and visitors online and in person another great big round of applause. We're delighted to have each and every one of you. All righty. Let's listen. We've got some, let's go on with, those, with some announcements this morning. First of all, first of all, I want to say how grateful I am to uh, uh, Reverend Luther Jenkins and our executive pastor, Pastor Davis, filling in the last two Sundays. Come on, let's give them a big hand. Thank you, Pastor Davis, and to Reverend Jenkins for just filling in and and bringing the word of God. Let, just a report on Sister Tolliver, doing good, hanging on in there. We praise God for her, hanging in there. It's going to be a lengthy recovery, but uh, but but God is faithful. God is good, and uh, and uh, and she is she's adjusting. It was not anything life threatening, certainly life altering, but not, not life threatening. She's got a little journey, about a three or four month journey before she'll be fully whole again. Uh, but we're thanking God. Come on, just praise God with me for just for what He's done. And so we're grateful. We're grateful to God for, for her. And, and we thank you for your, you know, all the calls, the texts. I couldn't respond to everyone. They were just too numerous. Uh, but I felt you, we felt your prayers and your support and your love. All of it's been there. And we thank God for each and every one of you. We're in the season of Lent. And, and we thank God for this wonderful season. You know, I was sharing with our, uh, with our congregation on, online when we launched Lent, uh, went the Wednesday before Lent. That says, let's make sure that we fast and we pray pray and that we do all those things that we do at First Baptist South Hill to observe Lent uh, because one we do, we do it because we're trying to draw closer to the Lord, connect with God even more and, to, and just uh, reflect on God's goodness in our lives. But when I said that we were going to be fasting because we're fasting every Monday, Wednesday and Friday until the dinner hour, I've asked the congregation to join with me. Now I'm fasting personally Monday through Saturday until the dinner hour, but I've asked the congregation to choose Monday through, uh, through Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, those of you who can, not everybody who can. But when we launched that, I said, you know, I want you to do it intentionally and, uh, and do it with seriousness this year because somebody's going to go through something. I said that. Somebody's going to go through something, and, and you need to be prayed up. You need to fast, and, and, and you need to make sure that you're connecting with God. And that was that Wednesday, and little did I know that the following Wednesday that I'd be in the waiting room waiting for Sister Tolliver to endure a five-hour surgery procedure. It's just good to be connected, connected with God. Never know where God is going to take us, but just got to be prepared and just connect it with the Lord. So we thank God. Listen, Lent, Lent is, is, is that that we do to reflect and connect with God. A couple things that we're doing, we're fasting and we're praying Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays. Uh, and then uh, we're looking forward to the Resurrection Sunday. And then we're, many of us are giving up some things. I told folk that I'm giving up, anybody know me, that I'm into my, my coffee and my Diet Coke. And so I'm giving up coffee and Diet Coke uh, for Lent. 
that. And in fact, my, me and my daughter, we're talking. We, only, we got a thing that just she and I are doing. We're going gluten-free uh, because I'm on a mission to, to lose that inch and a half I got doing COVID around my waist. And, uh, and at 15 pounds that I got through COVID, I'm, I'm on a mission with that, y'all. And so, and so we're going gluten-free. And, and uh, this, this dieting stuff is crazy. I'm going to tell you, this, uh, this, I don't know about this. This is, this is something. But anyway, anyway, but we're doing that. And then we're, you know, so we're giving up some things. We're fasting. We're praying. And then we have a, uh, you know, part of our sacrifice here at First Baptist South Hill, uh, the campaign that we have to pay off the parking lot, $100,000. I want to thank God for, for those of you. So we said that if we could do that, if we've got 200 people that will give $6 a day uh, for the 40 days of Lent, and we have 260 people who will give $5 a day, but that's a total of, uh, of those, six, those 600 people of $240 uh, for Lent and, uh, and 200 for others. And if you can do that, if you're joined with us, partner with us, with us uh, we can pay that parking lot off, and we're looking forward to it. We're not there yet. We're a little below our goal for as we progress along, uh, but I'm just confident that, it, that we're all going to engage, that we're going to partner, that we're going to be fully committed uh, before this Lent campaign is done. Let's give God the praise for what we're doing in the season of Lent. Also, we're going to culminate Lent not only with the Easter worship service, the Resurrection Sunday on April the 9th, but on April the 7th, uh, we always exchange Good Friday service with Shiloh Baptist Church over in Norfolk. My good friend and brother, Pastor Keith Jones, looking forward to that. They will be here. We're going to be in service, in person, uh, here at the church on Good Friday, April 7th, so mark your calendar for that. All right, in the way of future events, let's remind you, uh, tomorrow night, tomorrow night, our church conference is going to be tomorrow night, a big item on the conference is is that we're going to be approving presenting and approving the budget as well as also in the church conference we'll be looking at uh, some new dynamics with the pastor pastor succession planning uh, that we'll be bringing some things up regarding that and so we look for you now make sure that you do register on site uh, online and you'll get the link to come in for because the church conference is only for members only so register online get the link and we'll see you tomorrow night online at seven at seven o'clock now, Wednesday, uh, Winning Wednesdays with Minister Keisha McDaniel at 815. And I uh, look forward to seeing you there, ladies. Uh, you're just, it's a wonderful time to just coming and sharing together. Now, also during the season of Lent, there's only one Wednesday Bible study, and that is at 7 o'clock. Just a special inspirational thing uh, that I'm doing at 7 o'clock. So we will not have the noon day, noonday session, uh, but we look forward to seeing you at 7 o'clock on Wednesday and use the usual uh, Bible study link. So we'll see see you on Wednesday at 7 o'clock. And then on March the 17th, February, on Friday, March the 17th, uh, the Couples Ministry launches a new series, Vertical Marriage. Vertical Marriage. And there's a video regarding that. So I'm going to ask that video to come up now, uh, re launching this just new series, Vertical Marriage. <laughs> We're pretty honest. <laughs> and we're also really raw. It's because we talk about our struggles and the pain we've been through. You're trying to find your happiness from your spouse and you don't find it there. These are men and I'm looking for my husband. This Good. one's really tall. This one has lots of hair. Overrated. <laughs> Overrated. Of all the men in the world, I choose you. But then we're married a while and suddenly I didn't notice before, but you have this brown leaf. So we're gone. I think this is awesome. Jesus is with me. But then I start going the same places that I always went and Jesus is like, no, I got this. Like I know where to go. And it's my job to fix you because something's wrong with you. You think, yeah, I want my spouse to change. <laughs> then our marriage could work. And I'm telling you, don't go there. What would it look like if I allowed him to be in total and complete control? All right, Lord, I give you everything. It's all good for a while, right? But then it's like, wait, you don't talk, you don't listen, you don't lead, you don't pray, you don't spend time with the boys, you don't do all these things. Me, my no, 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 I never said that I would go there. No, you know, I'm going to help you. Let me help you, Jesus. I'm trying to get this hand. Like, Lord, no, no, like, don't do that. Like, no, here, I'm going to help you. And, 
Have you ever done this? <laughs> We're trying to find life horizontal from a person, from an amount of money, from a, from a job, from a thing. But we're actually looking in the wrong place. We have to take our eyes off of each other and say, okay, God, I want to find life from you. And let me tell you, when you do vertical marriage the way God designed marriage, I'm telling you, it can change your entire legacy. Alrighty, Vertical Marriage, join Pastor Mrs. Davis on this coming Friday, March the 17th at 7 p.m. Also, you may have noticed that there's a card in the back of the back of the pews, uh, the card back there. Uh, if you just click on that with your phone, that QR link, for those of you who are gonna, who's going to just partner with us in the campaign, raising the funds to pay off the parking lot, click the QR code on the card, and uh, it'll take you directly to your contribution site. Alrighty, in the way of some other uh, events that we've got going on on March the 18th, uh, at 3.30, Save Our Sons uh, presents self-care masterclass and movie. And so moms, come on out with your sons uh, in, uh, in just, that, just that presentation of self-care. You may register in the Fellowship Hall A immediately following the worship service uh, or register on the church's website. Church's website. Uh, also in the way of uh, some future things that are going on here at First Baptist, uh, new members orientation class on Tuesday, March the 21st. And then on Wednesday, March the 22nd, we have a blood drive that's going to be here at the church is going to be on site here at the church from 2 to 6 p.m. So do register for that time slot and, uh, and come on and let's just give some blood on March the 22nd. The Golden Vessels will sponsor a trip to Memphis, Tennessee, and, uh, and that's going to be taking place. Uh, that's going to be taking place on May the 20th through May the 28th. And so see Reverend Nyhog or Deaconess Woodbury or Deaconess Deb or, or Sister Deborah Lopez regarding that. Finally. Uh, the uh, 900 Men Strong Scholarship and Community Service Award breakfast is going to be taking place on April the 15th at 8.30 at the Chesapeake Conference Center. So see uh, Brother Durante Footman regarding that, and he will give you more information. At this time, uh, we've got one of our young people at Virginia State College University, so Virginia State University in Petersburg. Ashby, are you here? Come on, Ashby Riddick. Let's give her a big hand. Going to tell you about something that's going to be taking place here at First Baptist. Come on, Ashby. Good morning, church. Good morning. Like Pastor said, I am Ashby Riddick, a graduating senior awesome. studying. Yes. <laughs> yes, graduating senior studying social work at the illustrious, yeah. incomparable, ah. big state, well. Virginia State University. <laughs> And I'm here to let you all know that on March 26th at 4 p.m., VSU GC, which I am a proud member of, oh. will be here at the gospel, I mean, we will be here at First Baptist Church South Hill. Again, March 26th, the Virginia State Gospel Chorale will be here 4 p.m. for a concert sponsored by the Tidewater Alumni Chapter. Tickets are $25 and are available at, available by clicking the link on the First Baptist Church South Hill website, also eventbrite.com, using the keywords Virginia State University. All money raised helps support Virginia State students in the Tidewater area. I can remember what I think was the first Virginia State day at First Baptist Church South Hill yes. in 2014. Uh -huh. The issue was hot off of the America's Got Talent stage. It wasn't, I wasn't thinking about college, but I knew my grandmother, Camilla Ashby, had graduated from there, mm. and I knew it was a school to consider. It wasn't until VSUGC did their first Let's Walk, ah. where I fell in love with the choir. Uh -huh. By the end of the concert, I knew I wanted to go to Virginia State University. Awesome. So I encourage you all to please, 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 please Come out March 26, 4 p.m. here at First Baptist Church South Hill to see me and my choir sing for you all. Thank you. All right, Ashby, we're looking forward to it. Listen, if you have never 
Here at the Virginia State University Gospel Chorale, you are in for just a blessing. They've been here at First Baptist Southfield for uh, several years. They've been here, and they have come in, and allow me to use this term, they have turned the place out. They are, they are an awesome group of young people. Their voices are just phenomenal, and you will be blessed. Mark your calendar for the fourth Sunday in this month, and, uh, and you will not regret it. And you will, you, wherever they are in the town, you're going to find yourself going there because you want to hear you want to hear that those young people let's give them a big hand looking forward to them being a part of that all right, and finally, let's remember all of our bereaved families in our church. Sister Joan Lynch, who lost her brother, uh, was funeralized on this past week. Uh, brother B.J., Brother B.J. Uh, Hall, who's normally on the on the organ or one of the instruments over there, he and his wife Tracy at the hospital now. Uh, they gave birth to a little one, but uh, the, the child only, la only lived for 31 minutes, and so their hearts are saddened at the hospital now. And uh, so we, we're prayerful for them. We're prayerful for B.J. and Tracy and the, and the entire family. And, uh, and we're prayerful for Brother Judy and Melvin Johnson, who Melvin lost his mother. And, uh, and they'll be, they, they, I think they'll be traveling to, to funeralize his mother, if not already there uh, where they are. That is it for all of the announcements. We ask that you would take due note and govern yourselves accordingly. Let's prepare our hearts as we recognize the gifts that have already been given. And, uh, and we give God thanks for our offering. Let's just bow our heads. Most gracious God, our Father, we come now in obedience to your word to give back to you as you have given to us. We believe this morning, God, that all good and perfect gifts, they do come from you. So receive now our tithe, our gifts, and our offerings. And if we have fallen short, forgive us now. Help us to realize that we shall be blessed only as we bless you. Bless this that we give. God, in your kingdom will be blessed. Then bless that that remains, that our needs will be met. For God, it's always in Jesus' name that we give, and we gladly and cheerfully give. Amen and amen. Come on, give God a great big round of applause as we gladly give back to We've already given to God tithes, gifts, and offerings. The meal course is going to come and bless us this morning. Come on, let's give these men a great, just an awesome applause as they come to bless us this morning. Come on, let's give them an awesome applause this morning as they bless us, the male course of First Baptist Church.
I'm gonna be right here, Lord. Do what you want me to do, Lord. Say what you want me to say, Lord. Go where you want me to go, Lord. I'm gonna be right here, Lord. Here I am, Lord, for you. Here I am, Lord. I'm going to be right here, 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 Lord. I'm going to be, I'm going to be, I'm going to be right here, Lord. I'm going to be right here, Lord. I'm going to be right here, Lord. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be right here, Lord. I'm gonna be right here, Lord. I'm gonna be right here, Lord. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be right here, Lord. I'm gonna be right here, Lord. I'm gonna be right here, Lord. Give God some praise. God, I'm staying in your will. No matter what comes my way, no matter what trials, whatever tests, whatever temptation, God, I'm just going to stay in your will. Why? Because your will is best for me. Your will is what's best for me. Your will is what's best for me. Anybody just made up your mind that you're just going to stay in the will of God? Hallelujah. I'm staying in your will. You guide my path. You lead the way. You chart my course because your will, God, your will, hallelujah. I'm going to stay. I'm going to stay in your will. Thank you, men. Come on, let's give God the praise for our men once more and again. We thank God. We thank God for, for the men of First Baptist Southfield, these dedicated men who even them too, uh, during this time of COVID, the two years that we were, we were out that, uh, uh, you know, along with uh, the, you know, just the Chancellor Choir, uh, these men, uh, chosen of these men, certain of these men were just there to help support and carry on the music ministry of, of church. So I love these brothers. Brothers, I'm grateful to God for them, their commitment, their dedication. And Brother Lucas, it's good to see you back with the fellas there. Good to see you there, buddy. Good to see you. God bless you. He's been under the weather, too. Just good to, good to see you as, a, as well. And I think I saw Sister Cassell come in here earlier. They, did she? Did I, did I see her back there? There she is. There she is. Sister Cassell, there she is. Good to see you. Good to see you. 90, 90 what year is it? Just 90 or 91 years old, Sister Cassell? 91 years old. Let's give God the praise for her. My first grade teacher, my first grade teacher, Sister Gazelle, she taught me in the, in the first grade. You know, back in that day, back in that day when you didn't have your act together, you act up in class, back in that day, your teacher could get you straight. And, and I've only had the whole, the whole 12 years I was in school, I got straight one time by Sister Gazelle. But, but she, she had that she had that 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 foot ruler and she tell you hold your hand out you hear, she whack you and you go give, give me that hand again <laughs> i went through that one time and say never no more <laughs> Never no more. But we're grateful to God. I mean, I, I am a, a part of who I am today is because they just the just the investment of teachers who were dedicated to their profession like her. And we thank God for her. Sister Cassell, we love you. We love you. 
All righty, all righty. We're ready. We're ready to get into uh, into the Word of God. Uh, but before I go there, I, I just got to go here. How many how many nurses or, or nurses aides, nurses assistants uh, in the hospitals do we have in our congregation? In, 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 if you're here, will you stand up? Will you stand up? Those of you in the, in the health profession, nurses and whatever. I just want to salute, whether you're active, retired, or whatever, I just want to salute you, uh, men and women, mostly ladies, but if there are men, I want to salute you for the awesome work that you do. I was reminded of that when Sister Tolliver, the two weeks that she was in the hospital, almost, that, uh, of the, you know, just how short-handed they are, uh, but, but yet they give it their all, they give it everything they got, and I just praise God for the work that you do. For that service at Chesapeake General Hospital, was absolutely outstanding. Wherever you work, I salute you. God, let's give them a big hand. Let's give them a big hand. Oh my goodness! I, it was it was it was something just to see those folks stretched, but but trying to cover every base. And of course, it was Sister Tolliver. I just tell them, y'all going on about your business. I got her, I got her. Just just stayed near the hospital with her every night throughout the night, uh, because I knew they were busy and the attention that she needed. I wanted her to have first class attention, and that first class attention gonna only come from from me. Be there when she need, what she need, when she needed, or however she needed. Be right there. And that's, that's, that's something that I thank God for. I thank God for, praise God for that. I, I'm just thankful to God. I'm just thankful to God for my health so that I could be there for her because brothers, just, just, just what we fellows do. We're there and you know, I, I, Mrs. Tolliver and I, we, 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 we're just that way with each other. There's just certain things that I don't, want, I don't want my daughter to do, don't want my son to do. It's my place to do. And I'm glad to be there to do it and we're grateful to God for that. So thank you for those of you who are in the health professions. Let's get ready to get into the Word of God. Let's get ready to get into the Word of God. There's a word from the Lord that comes to us this morning from Psalms 91. The text will be displayed very shortly. We let us stand as we give God a reference. Psalms 91, and I'll read selected verses of Psalms 91. Selected verses. It begins reason as follows. Verse 1 through, through 5 first. And it says in verse 1, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, he is my refuge, my fortress, my God. In him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noise of pestilence. Verse 4 says, and he shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow that flieth by day. Verse 9 reads, Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. Finally, verse 14 says, Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him, and I will set him on high, because he hath known my name. We ask that God would add a blessing upon the reading of his holy word and sanctify these precious truths in the very depths and midst of our hearts said by the reading of God's word and the application of the same. We'll have that which we need to help us as we run this Christian race. Let us bow our heads. Eternal, gracious God, our Father. God, we thank you for this, another privilege and opportunity that we have, God, to present you through your word and to hear you through your word. God, even as your word is a lamp unto our feet, your word is a light unto our pathway. God, we thank you because it is through your word that we gain strength, that we gain confidence, inspiration, and insight. So, God, we ask now that you allow us to lay aside every weight and every measure that we may hear your word. Now, God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart, may they be holy and acceptable in thy sight. For you are strength and you are our redeemer. For it is in Christ's name we do pray. And all the people of God said together, amen. Come on, give God another great big round of applause. I'll read verse 1 again. It says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Well, let's just read the rest. I will say of the Lord that he is my refuge and my fortress, my God. In him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowl and from the noisome pestilence. 
He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. And thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow that flieth by day, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling, for he shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee in all thy ways, because he has set his love upon me. Therefore will I deliver him, and I will set him on high, because he has known my name. For just a very few minutes this morning, I want to speak from the thought, the subject, God who covers. God who, God who, who covers. You know, it, it, is, it, is, it is wonderful for those of us in the, in the community of the committed that one of the wonderful privileges that you and I have as believers is this unique relationship that we have with God. It's a relationship that we have with God that is unique, and what makes it unique is that it is a relationship between just, just you and God. We know God to be a God who is omni, omniscient, omnipresent. He, he knows everything. He's, he's omnipresent, meaning he's everywhere. And, 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 and when, I, when I consider that, that piece that he's omnipresent, I hear that, that that lets me know that he is everywhere and he's everywhere at the same time. But even in, in his omnipresence, there is this uniqueness that you and I have that when he is with me, it is just me and him. It's just me and, and God. It is God with me and, and me with God. It's a precious time. It's, it's a wonderful time. It's an awesome time when, when I'm with him and you with him and he's with you when we are dwelling together. Because not only is it a special time and a precious time, but it's a special place. It's a special place. Because, because God has you at, 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 at a place and at a time where, where it is in that place and time that he shares with you and you know that it's just, it is just him giving you time and, and you giving him your time. I remember I was having a conversation with my, my, my 10-year-old granddaughter, uh, Mia, a couple months ago, and, and she's, the, she's the youngest of four. Mia asked me a question. said, Daddy, uh, Papa, uh, do, do, do you have a favorite grandchild? That's Mia. Mia said, Papa, do you have a favorite grandchild? And I said, yeah, Mia, I got to confess. I do have a favorite grandchild. And you, uh, uh, if you got four grandkids and you have a favorite grandchild, say, yeah, I do have a favorite of, of all four of my grandchildren. She said, who is it, Grandpa? Who is it, Papa? And I said, it's whoever I'm talking to at the time. <laughs> Whichever one I'm talking to at the time, that's my favorite one. That's my favorite one. Why? Because it's me and you and you and me. David realized that he had that kind of, of, of relationship with God, where with God being everywhere, God knowing everything, God being with everybody, that David had this special relationship with God because in verse 1, David says, there's this place that I'm with him and he's with me that is a special place. And David said, it's called in verse 1, the secret place. It says in verse 1 that he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the mighty. That, that secret place where, where it's just nobody but me and God. Where, where, where it is there where God dwells with me and God deals with me and God shares with me. God pours in me. Where, where God is just me and, and God. That, that, secret, that secret place. And David called it the secret place of the Most High because all of us, whether we know it or not, and whether we're ready to confess it or not, we all got this secret place. We, we've got this, this, this special place. I remember, you know, my wife used to use the term, and I hadn't heard it before. She used it. She, she used this term that she called her, that she called her Bama. And I had to find out, what, what's, what's a Bama? She got that term from a mama. A Bama. And I learned what a Bama was, bro, Kenny. 
Learn, learn what a Bama was. You know, when, you, when you're going somewhere, your wife asks you, you got some money. You, 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 I mean, your restaurant, you pay the bill. Wherever you go, you pay the bill. And then you think, just when you think that y'all ain't got nothing else left, here she come with something that, that you ain't thought she had. You didn't even know she had. Where, where you get that from? Well, I got that from Alabama. <laughs> well, you don't ask me for mine if you got Alabama. <laughs> The secret place. <laughs> you, you, the Bama, with, with, with most of the ladies, but I was going to say the older ladies, but most of the ladies, the Bama is right, right up in this. <laughs> you know. <laughs> y'all know what I'm talking about, ladies? Go, go, on. <laughs> let me leave y'all alone. <laughs> David says, the secret place. Of the, of the most high God. D David says that it, it is there that, that he abides under the shadow of, 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 the, of the Almighty. And, and then he says something else. He says it in verse 1, in verse 4 rather, that he shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shall thou trust him. And so for a few minutes I want to talk about God who covers us. Because, because one of the things that we begin to understand in life, y'all, that, that in life you and I are going to have some realities that we've got to deal with, realities that sometimes make us cry, realities that cause us to hang our heads, realities that cause us sometimes to wonder, why me? Realities that question, or cause us to question, why me at this time, uh, my spouse, my child, my mama, my daddy, why, why us, why us and our family at this time, realities. And it is in those realities in life, y'all, that when we are faced with those in life, that we are encouraged to trust God even the more. And, and I want to share with you that that trusting extends to the place uh, oftentimes where it's just you and God, God and you, the secret place where, where, where it is in those times, that in those moments that you have with God and where God has with you, where, where you are trusting him and that you're relying on him, that, that it is there that God gives you what you need to get through what you get, got to get through because there's nobody else that can get you through it but the Lord. Are you with me, y'all? For, for just a very few minutes because, because what we begin to find out is that life does not promise us a world free from trial and tribulation, y'all. Life, li life does not say to us that you're not going to have problems, you're not going to have uh, you're not going to have worries. However, he does promise God that when we are faced with such, such challenges as these, uh, that he reminds us that he's right there with us. That he's right there, that, that it is in those times of challenge, in those times of trial, in those times of tribulation that God reminds us that, that I got you covered. I, I got you covered. I, I, I got you back. I got you back. I got you back. And so, and so David reminds us through his testimonies that, that it is in the covering of God. Because in the covering that he tells us in Psalms 91 and 4, that he shall cover thee with his feathers. I was watching, uh, watching one of the TV programs, and National Geographic. I, I enjoy I get caught up in those some, sometimes. And watching the animals and how animals uh, just, just the, the dynamics of taking care of each other and how they how they feed and how how they hunt their prey but I'm always captivated by eagles how eagles will 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 will, will go out and find prey to bring back to the little eaglets that are in the nest and 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 what I'm always captivated by is that when the eagle is when he comes back to the nest he's got eaglets in the nest that that what he does is that he spreads his wings come into the nest and it looks like he just drops right over the top of all of the eaglets and, and I'm reminded of that when David says that God covers us with his feathers. Because, because we are like little eaglets that, that, that there are times that God wants us to know that, that when the harsh realities of life, they get, when they begin to set in, the, uh, the deaths and the tragedies and the trials and the things that you can't escape, that, 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 that's always going to be there in front of you, that you're, and the challenges that will always be a part of your journey. God says that I want you to know that I'll cover you with my feathers. 
Here's what, what God would have us to know, that, that, that when he covers us with his schedule, I want to suggest that there's three things that God is. Uh, he, when, when he covers us, the first of all is that we see it in Psalm 91. It says that he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty. Somebody say he's a keeper. What are you saying, Reverend Tolliver? Is that when he's keeping us, is that he's watching over us. When, when the Lord is watching over us, he's there to make sure that he sees what nobody else can see. When he's watching over us, when he's watching over us, he sees the danger that can come our way. He sees the challenges that we don't even see yet. When he's watching over us, he lets us know, listen here, because I'm watching over you, you ain't got to necessarily watch over yourself because I got you covered. That's why the Bible says that at night when you go to bed, God, he said that God never sleeps and God never slumbers, that he's always watching over you all day and all night. The Lord is watching over you. And I, said, I heard a preacher say a long time ago, if the Lord is staying up all night long watching over me, ain't no need me losing sleep. I'm going to get on my pillow and say, now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord. I said, why? Because the Lord is watching because he's watching over us, because he's a keeper. He, he's a keeper that, 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 I, that, that I feel because when he's watching, what I get is an awesome sense of security uh, that I'm going to be okay. Why? Because uh, uh, there's nothing that can come my way uh, that God is not already aware of. Can I tell somebody, no matter what you're going through, no matter what you're dealing with, that it never surprises the Lord? Why? Because the Lord is watching over you. He knew you were going to get it before you got it. He knew that it was coming your way before you saw it coming your way. Somebody ought to give God the praise because he's a keeper. He's a he, he's a keeper. David says that I dwell in his secret place and I abide under his shadow. Why? Because he keeps me. He's watching over me. But not only that, verse in the verse 3 says, surely he shall deliver me from the snare of, of the fowler and from the noisy and pestilence. Somebody say he cares. <laughs> you know what God does? When, when God cares, it says that what that means is that he is, uh, that he has a feeling uh, that uh, connects to what we are going through. That there is an emotional deta attachment that God has uh, with whatever you and I are, are dealing with. Uh, you know, the wonderful thing that I love about the Lord, uh, when I read his word, I, I remember reading in the Bible that when, uh, that when Lazarus was in the grave and Mary and Martha told him uh, that Lazarus was already dead, uh, that the Bible says, if one of the shortest verses in the Bible, it says that Jesus wept. Uh, and the reason that Jesus wept, because he feels what we feel. Uh, when we are in pain, he feels our our pain. He feels our misery. He feels our anxiety. Anybody know that you got God that cares about you? No matter what you're going through, he cares about you. Uh, the world may not care, but the Lord cares about you. And because he cares, anybody know that he'll step into your situation, whatever you're in, you're dealing with, whatever you're up against, because he cares about you. He looks out for you because he cares about you. He's watching over you because he cares about you. You're in his secret place and allowed to be there because he cares about you. Because, because the Lord, because the Lord cares about us. But not only does he keep us and he cares, but in Psalms 91 and 11 says this, for he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. The same God who watches over us is a God who cares for us. But not only does he watch for us and cares for us, but when the enemy comes our way, when death, hell, and destruction try to overtake us when the charges of life and the demons of life try to step into your environment. Anybody glad that you serve a good God? Just say, listen, step back because here's what I want you to know that the battle is not yours but the battle is the Lord's. He will step in front of you and say, listen, I got your back. Get behind me. He will go before you as a warring angel He'll stand beside you as a protecting angel. Somebody ought to give God some glory because he will protect you no matter what you're going through. Protection does not mean that he makes the enemy goes away. What protection means is that he deals 
with your enemy right in front of you to let you know that no weapon formed against you is ever going to prosper. Why? Because he's a God that's mighty in all his ways. He's a God that's able to make a way out of no way. He's a God that can do what nobody can do. If there's a mountain, he can chop the way to mountain. If there's a low valley, he can bring up the low valley. If there's an enemy coming your way, he'll stand and run interference. Give God glory. Give God the praise. He, he, he watches. He, he cares. God protects us. But, but here's the other thing that he does. He watches. He cares. He protects us. And then now Psalm 91 and 15 says, he shall, you shall call upon me and I will answer you. I will be there in trouble. I'm just paraphrasing. And I will deliver you. And I'll honor you. Can I tell somebody the good thing about the Lord is that he always he always hear us I told y'all that when we came into Lent that I wanted us to pray and I wanted us to fast and I wanted us to sacrifice because you don't know what will come your way where when you need the Lord you need to hear him right away you know with all of that wonderful service that we had over at Chesapeake General when Sister Tolliver was there there were a few times that I hit the call button for the nurse to come to the room. Hit the call button. Five minutes later, there's no response. Hit the call button again. 10, 15 minutes, there's no response. Then eventually I had to just roll up my own sleeve and do my own thing. But the thing that I love about the Lord, when you hit the call button, he's already there. When you call his name, he's already there. God will let you know before you call I will answer and while you're yet speaking I'll be right there won't he be there for you won't he hear you won't he make a way somebody give God glory give God some praise he he promises that when he's covering us, that he'll hear us every time we call, and he will deliver us. He says in the same verse 14, because he set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him because he's known my name. Can I tell somebody, the only reason that God cares, the only reason that God will keep you, the only reason that God will deliver you. The only reason that God will make a way for you because he knows your name. Aren't you glad that you got a God that don't have to look you up? You got a God that don't have to figure out who you are. Anybody glad he knows your name? He called you by name. He reached you by name. He's got your cell number. He got your Twitter handle. He got your cash app ID. Cause he knows your name. Give God glory. Give God praise. He knows my name. Somebody give him praise. Because when he called you, you better answer. When he called your name, if you can't think of what to say, give him glory. Give him honor. Give him praise. Because he's worthy of all your praise. Because he's got you covered. Because he has your back. Give God the praise. You can give him, you can give him glory, honor, and praise because you're in a special place and he's already called your name. Come on, 
come on, get with me, where it's going to be just me and you, and he calls you by name. I, I, I know without a shadow of a doubt that when the Lord has made a way, when the Lord has opened the door, when the Lord has delivered, that he just called that name Michael. Come on, you're my child. I promise you. I promise you that I will keep you, that I will deliver you, that I will protect you. But not only you, not only me, he has your back. He has your back. He has your back. The Lord has your back. He that dwelleth in that secret place of the Most High God, you will abide under the shadow of the Almighty. You ought to give God some praise because you've got a secret place. <laughs> because, because you've got, you've got the secret place where it's just you and God. Everybody stand on your feet, if you will. Stand on your feet. Right, right where you're standing. Right where you're standing, right where you're sitting at home right where you are. I want you to just close your eyes for just a minute. Everybody close your eyes. Everybody close your eyes. Because, because when you close your eyes, you don't see what's around you. When you close your eyes, there is a sense of solitary. When you close your eyes, there, is, there are no distractions because of your vision. But when you close your eyes, you can concentrate on a presence that's with you right now. And, and I want you to just know that right now, right where you are, right where you're sitting at home, right where you're standing here in the sanctuary with your eyes closed, there's a secret place where the Spirit of the Lord is, is abiding with you right now. And God is whispering something in your ear. He's calling your name. He's calling your name right now. And I want you to hear the Lord in your spirit call your name. And he's telling you this, I got you covered. I got you covered. I got you covered. Whatever you're dealing with, God is saying, I got you covered. Whatever bothered you last night, yesterday, last week, God's saying, I got you covered. Whatever's going to come your way this week that you don't even know is already in the, your path, God is telling you right now, I've got you covered because you're in my secret place and you're mine. I got you covered. Let's just stay there for just a minute. Eyes closed, eyes closed. Can you praise him in your own spirit, your own way? Can you go on and just praise the Lord however you praise him? Lord, I thank you. Lord, I praise you. Lord, I give you glory. Lord, I give you honor. Thank you for the secret place. Thank you for this solitary moment. Thank you, God, for just the sharing that you have with me and the sharing I have right now with my eyes closed. God, I thank you. I thank you right now, God. I know I'm in a room with, in a sanctuary full of folk, but right now with my eyes closed, God, it's just me and you right now. Thank you for the covering. Thank you for the covering. Thank you for having my back. Thank you for just watching over me. Thank you for keeping me. Thank you for caring for me. Thank you for delivering me. Thank you for knowing my name. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Come on, give God some praise. Can you open your eyes? Come on. Maybe there's someone here this morning that 
you want to draw closer to the God who, who knows your name. God who promises that he cares, he's a keeper, he's a deliverer, he's a protector. And a God who knows you better than you know yourself. I want to offer him to you right now. One who promised you that when you re accept me into your heart by accepting the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, here, here's the deal God has for you. You know what? You don't have to be perfect. In fact, I, I want you call to want you to accept me into your heart in the midst of your brokenness, in the midst of your incompleteness, in the midst of your shortcomings, and amid all of the, the stuff you got going on. I want to be in your heart. And all you've got to do is just confess the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior right now. The Bible says that in Romans 10 and 9, if you confess Christ with your mouth and believe in your heart, you shall be saved. Saved from what, Pastor? From the eternal penalty of sin and saved to a new life in Jesus Christ. If there is one right now, and you don't have to walk down to the front, but right now will you pray this prayer with me? Just bow your head, everybody. Lord Jesus, right now, I accept you into my heart. I accept you into my life. And I confess to you, Lord Jesus, that I'm a sinner, but I'm a sinner that want to be saved by your grace. I don't know a whole lot about the Bible, don't know a whole lot about church, but I'm hearing your message this morning, Lord, that you've got me covered, and I just want to be eternally under your covering. So God, I thank you for bringing me to a place, whether I'm online or in person, where I can accept the Lord Jesus Christ in my life. Now, God, lead me to a place where I can grow, where I can know, know your word, know you even more, even as I grow in, in faith. For it is in Jesus' name, I accept him in my heart and into my life. Amen and amen. Come on, give God the praise for that new life. I'm just going to believe. I'm just going to believe that somebody, somebody this morning prayed, prayed that prayer. We're going to get ready to go, but we're trying to rush it. I thank God for his word this morning. I thank God for, for God just showing up and just allowing us to feel his presence uh, through the preaching of his word. I pray that this week will be a week that will be powerful for you, that even as you're fasting, as you're praying, as you're sacrificing, that you feel the awesome goodness and the presence of the Lord in each and every one of your lives. Uh, let's pray our closing prayer. Prayer at this time, we want to be prayerful for our brother BJ and Tracy. We want to be prayerful for all of our bereaved families, for all of our sick and our shut in, wherever they are. Let's pray together. Eternal and all wise God, our Father, God of love, God of mercy, and God of grace, God, you who know all about us, because God, you created us. God, first of all, we want to thank you for your word this morning. Thank you for a word that reminded us, God, that when we are faced with the realities of life that can sometimes be harsh, God, we're just so thankful to know that, God, you've got our back, that you have us covered. Thank you, God, for allowing us space to come into your space. Thank you for allowing us to hear you call our name and where we can feel kept, cared for, and protected in every life situation. Now, God, as we're about to leave this place, God, we ask and we put before you all of those who are sick and those who are shut in. Whatever it is they stand in need of, God, in the name of Jesus, we ask God that you would touch and mend bodies, that you would deal with the, with, the, with troubles and trials and tribulations. We pray, God, for every aching, every, every heartache, for every mind ache, God, for every bodily function that's not right. God, in the name of Jesus, we pray that there will be healing, that there will be wholeness, that there will be restoration, that there will be recovery in the name of Jesus. It is in the name of Jesus that we pray for healing in families and healing in marriages. We pray, God, that there would be not only healing in families and marriages, but even in our nation and our world. We pray and continue to put before you, God, uh, the meanness, the madness, and the malice that is in the world today. God, we pray that you would just begin to show up and show out, show off, God, as only you can in a mighty way, in the name of Jesus. God, we put before you our brother B.J. Hall and his wife. I've traced it. Even in the midst of heartbreak, God, and disappointment, God, we pray that you will cover them with your feathers right now, that you, they will feel your awesome presence, God, and you will mend it as only you can mend the heartache and the pain that they're going through. Cover all of our bereaved families, Lord, as only you can. Be a mother to the motherless and a father to the father, a friend to the friendless, as only you can. Now, God, for everything that we've asked,
bless you for. We thank you for Jesus Christ. We thank you for salvation. We thank you for his love. So we don't wait till the battle is over to give you praise. We don't wait till the victory is won to give you praise. But we bless your name. We praise your name. We give you glory, God. Let everything that has breath, come on, give God some praise, won't you? We claim it, we receive it in the name of Jesus. In that name, we pray. In that name, we claim it. In that name, it's going to be all right. In that name, hallelujah. We bless you, God. We bless you, God. Now may the grace of God and the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit, may he bless you when you're going in and you're coming out and you're rising up and in your lying down. To God be the glory forever and ever and ever. Let the people of God say amen and amen again. God bless you and have a blessed and wonderful day in the Lord. God bless you, everybody. God bless you.